Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I was commissioned to do a dog portrait. And here's the reference photo. I'm only painting uh, the one dog. I believe these are French bulldogs, I'm not quite sure. And this is uh, one session's worth of work, about um, an hour and a half, two hours. I listened to Pink Floyd and Mozart, um, oboe and bassoon and uh, clarinet concertos. And I got to this point. This is one session, and I'm hoping the process will be about two or three uh, sessions worth of work. And I thought maybe it would be interesting um, to have a discussion early on in a painting to talk about what kind of uh, issues, uh, problems uh, that I'm thinking about. I need to go from this point and ideally uh, create a much better uh, painting. And I'm hoping to do this uh, in very pragmatic, practical terms. What, what are the things that I need to do? And at this point, I'm very happy with uh, my progress so far. Um, one of my primary concerns when I first uh, start a painting like this is uh, proportion. And I want it to look like a dog. I want it to look like a certain breed of dog. And the hope is to make it look like one specific dog, uh, the pet of the owner. And when I start, I'm trying to get all of the proportions right, get the eyes, uh, eyes, nose, ears, all in a place that's correctly in relation to one another. So the distance between the eye and the nose, the distance between the eyes, um, and start kind of working from there. Uh, I used these two paint brushes. Th these were the only two brushes that I used. And there's a general principle in painting. Um, one is that it, it's much easier, it's much more convenient if you're thinking about working in shapes instead of lines. And one of the principles is that you want to use the largest brush that you can uh, for any given space. So filling in all of this stuff, these big spaces, I wouldn't want to use um, a little brush like this. It doesn't make sense. It's not efficient. And the, the first thing that I did before I even started properly painting is I put a light wash um, all over the canvas and it's to kill the white. Uh, the technical term or the term that you would uh, hear artists use is you're grounding the canvas. And by getting rid of that stark white color Here's a white piece of paper. It's much easier to register uh, the colors that you're using. Um, any color next to a bright white piece of paper, um, your eyes don't register as its true color. And so uh, as a painter, it's much easier to have a, um, a muted or neutral background and typically, uh, in like classical painting, that light wash, if it was an oil painting, would be done with uh, turpentine. You would use either uh, a burnt umber or a raw umber. You could use any sort of brown, but those two were um, classical. A burnt umber would um, have a light wash of a warm brown. A raw umber would be a light wash of a cooler 
uh, colored brown. So I put this light wash, and I chose um, a, a, a reddish brown. And the reason that I did that, I did this light wash, and you can see it poking through here, and it's kind of pink. And our little friend here, you can see his flesh, and there's these little pink uh, bits that pop out uh, underneath the fur. And if, if this was a classical painting, you would have that light wash, and then you would start the underpainting, which would be typically two colors. You would, um, you could use burnt umber or uh, raw umber, and you would do the whole entire painting uh, only with <clears throat> uh, brown and white. And again, it's, it's taking away problems uh, that you don't have to worry about. You're only going to be worrying about composition proportion, and all of those tonal variances. The element that you are um, removing as a set of one of your problems is color. And so you can do the whole entire painting, uh, cl classically it would be called a cartoon, in just two colors, brown and white. And then you would start another underpainting. And if it's a figure painting or a portrait, the skin areas, the, the, the uh, fleshy parts of the painting, you would do in a green. Or if it was a man's face, you might even use uh, black. And the reason that you would do that is uh, th there, there's um, kind of a standard principle in classical painting that you're going to work lean to fat, and that means you're going to be building up um, several very thin, translucent layers of paint, and each layer that goes on top is going to be um, a little less thin. It's going to be a thicker layer, and you're going to build up these translucent layers. And in oil painting, um, the great virtue of that is all of that color, all of that work, shines through um, out of the painting. And so some of the work that you have uh, below a certain layer peeks through. And the reason you would do green and flesh, um, and, and like a flesh part uh, skin tone area a painting because in shadow I don't know if it comes off but in shadow it'll be much cooler those kind of green uh, veiny colors and you're using the method um, to your advantage the, the reason you might do black on a man's face is uh, it very much helps create that uh, five o'clock shadow look. Um, in, in any event, I did this pink, uh, kind of light reddish brown background in the hope that by the time the painting is finished, um, there'll still be remnants of those little pink bits that will help with the flesh that peeks through the fur. And as far as pragmatic issues that I still need to work on. I'm very happy with the proportion, but I thought we could go over what's still not quite right, what I need to fix. And so I did a few um, uh, changes as far as artistic license. It's a reference photo. I'm, I'm not trying to replicate this photograph. And so I changed the point of view. Now the dog is looking uh, straight ahead as if it was a proper um, seated portrait. We're not looking down on the dog anymore. I removed the rump. There's not going to be a floor 
background. And uh, the way that the dog's face, um, I kind of moved it from uh, looking kind of up at an angle uh, to looking more straightforward. And now I have um, like my working dog and all of these kind of shapes and proportions um, need to be pulled together. So this whole image, this shape needs to look like one structure and not different pieces that are kind of put together. And so as an example, I'm fairly happy with the position of this eye. It feels like it's set in. Whereas this eye, it's so close. Uh, when, when you're thinking about um, especially the features of a face, just the, the smallest changes in wh where th certain things are located makes huge differences. So this eye is kind of floating over here. It doesn't feel like it's set into the dog's face. And so most likely this eye needs to get, kind of get pulled over and you can see in the image, um, it needs to be pulled over right to the nose. And what that'll do is it'll make all of this feel like one shape. And there's other pragmatic things that just need to uh, be corrected. Um, the shape of the ears they're going to be different shapes. They're not going to look like mirror dropped. I dropped my reference photo. <clears throat> it's, not going to, it's not going to be a mirror uh, image of itself. They're going to look like different shapes, but they still have to look like uh, the same kind of ear, the same shape, but just being looked at from a different direction. And so these do not look like a pair of ears. That looks like one kind of ear. That looks like a different kind of ear. And uh, looking at it, this one is closer. Uh, and a lot of this is going to be dictated by the skull the shape of the skull of the dog, getting all of this to match, and then setting those ears in, and again, making it look like the ear um, connects with the dog's head. The whole body is going to be in more of a shadow, um, just from the nature of light falling, um, there's going to be a shadow cast from the dog's uh, jowls and, and chin and head. And so this is all going to be cast in shadow. But right now, the dog's head looks like one thing. And this part is totally separated. And that, that means for me, um, those really nuanced differences and color are going to be very important. This uh, dog is, you would say, just a white, white dog with uh, colored markings. There's going to be very, there's going to be no white at the end of the painting. It's all going to be very, very light and pale, but there's going to be pinks and blues and greens and grays, browns, uh, all very pale. As a patch, as, as just a series of um, uh, toned, uh, toned or colored uh, patches put together to make it all look like one coat. Right now, it looks like this image is sort of stuck on top, and I don't want that. I want it to look um, uniform. 
one dog. As far as going from uh, a painting of a dog to a certain dog, this particular dog, the main thing that I'm concerned with is going to be uh, the coloring, the, the, the dog's markings. And this dog has um, that black snout that comes down, and it's going to be very important that of all the other things that are, are difficult to, to make uh, any portrait really look like a certain person, um, it, it'll be much easier for me to kind of mask or hide um, any deficiencies um, that I'm bringing as a painter um, by getting the, the markings of the dog's face um, really accurately. That way if um, an eye isn't quite right or the jowl um, doesn't sit quite right, um, it'll be a little hidden by just uh, the markings matching up. A really good portrait painter will bring a personality where you will look at the image and you, you can just see um, a, a mindset or uh, an emotion or just a character trait uh, sh just shown through imagery. My main issue is just getting that marking and if I can, at that point, add a little bit of personality. I'll have to see about that. As far as white goes, again, in, in a classical uh, oil painting, um, typically, uh, especially a portrait, the only time an artist will use white will be at the very end of the painting. It'll be one of the last um, marks on the canvas before the signature. And it'll be with uh, the thinnest, thinnest, smallest brush to put that little highlight on the eye, that little dot of white. And it's amazing how much that little dot of white can bring a face to life. Right now, these are just sort of dead eyes. I have a lot of work to do with getting um, the irises and pupils and um, the details of an eye put in. That little dot of white will make all the difference. And I talked about all those different ways that, um, all the things that a classical, um, Italian or Dutch painter uh, would be thinking about. I'm painting in a, in a totally different style. I'm not spending weeks or months. Um, I want to spend three, two to three sessions, uh, about an hour and a half to two hours per session. And the way that I'm painting, in some ways is similar, but the um, actual technique or execution um, it's just completely different. And it's building up just certain shapes instead of um, those beautiful gradations. You spend all of that time just blending uh, one subtle um, dark tone into a little bit of a lighter tone and have things really smooth and rounded. Um, it's much more poppy or more modern and just in the performance of painting it's quicker and and i like this style i like the effect um, as, as a personal preference so um, it's quick it's enjoyable to do while i'm painting and i like the results those are all very at very important um, aspects um, of the process of painting. And there are some things that uh, I wasn't concerned about at all. Composition, for example. I just wanted to have 
um, the dog in the center with a background. And as far as all, I talked about some of the things. Um, as far as getting the dog to look like a certain dog. As far as the painting, the image that I want the end result to be is that the black marking of the snout and then everything else being really pale um, colored whites. So all the white of the dog and then a very pale background. Now, what I'm not sure about, because one of the ways that I can have very similar color tones, uh, as, as far as two colors being very, very light or very dark, is the color, of course, but whether it's warm or cool, and a great way of kind of separating the foreground and the background is what is going to be warm and what is going to be cool. And at this point, I'm not really sure. I know there's going to be some pinks uh, coming through the dog's um, fur, that little those little pink fleshy bits. Um, but the white of a shadow is going to be very cool. And right now, I, I sort of have the whole image being cool, and that's going to change. Either the background will be slightly warmer, um, or the background will be a little bit cooler, and the dog's body will be a little bit warmer. It'll all s still be like the same um, level of saturation. It'll all be very pale, but there'll be a slight difference that really helps differentiate um, the background from the foreground. Instead of uh, the whole thing being flat or or muddy, just um, you want it to pop. Um, so th those are some of my thoughts. Um, I thought maybe it would be kind of interesting in, in general. Um, it might be more interesting if you were interested in painting or dogs. Um, but let, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of uh, the painting, the progress, um, let me know if you'd like me to do another video like this, perhaps um, when I'm at the very end of the painting and going over, I could go over uh, what I talked about today and then um, maybe talk about uh, what I accomplished and um, what I didn't. So let me know if any of that might be interesting and what you think about the painting so far. Let me know what you think about anything that I had to say. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, please leave a comment if you would like, and take care. Thank you. Bye.